Hello, and welcome to Chocolate Treat Bonsai. In today's video, I'm going to be showing you how my bald cypress seedlings have been growing over the past year, and also some bonsai work that I did earlier in the spring. The first step of my bonsai work is dating the tree out of its old pot so that I can access its roots. I used a chopstick to detach the soil from the walls of the pot so that I could slide the root ball out of the pot without hurting the tree. This method is only needed if your pot is made out of a non-flexible material, like terracotta. If your pot is made out of something like flimsy plastic, you can just gently squeeze the walls of a pot inward to detach the soil from the plastic. Now that the tree is out of its pot, I use a special tool called a root rake to remove the soil from the roots of the tree. I'm removing the soil so that I can see where the roots have grown and prune them appropriately. During this procedure, you have to spray the roots with water about every other minute to stop them from drying out. This step of the process can take about half an hour to complete. While working, it is very important to be patient of the roots, as they don't like to give up their soil all too easily. If you find an especially dense area of roots, you might have to use a chopstick to remove the soil from those hard-to-reach places. With the soil gone, I am now able to prune the roots of the tree. In nature, trees grow in a very erratic pattern which often forms a tangled mess of roots like we see here. Trees usually like to focus most of their energy on one big root that grows straight down into the soil. Because this tree was growing in a pot last year, the taproot, as it's called, couldn't grow down that far and ended up swirling around the bottom of the pot. I'm pruning the roots of this tree for two main reasons. The first reason is so that the tree can fit into smaller training pots, which will help develop the root system. The second reason I am pruning the roots is to help train the roots to grow more radially. In bonsai, it is important that your root system is growing parallel to the surface of the soil. This helps your trees grow in a bari. Because trees naturally grow taproot systems, you have to prune and train the roots into becoming a more fibrous and radial root network. If you train your tree's roots in this fashion for a decade or two, Bernabari might look something like this. When I finished pruning the tree, it was left with only about 20% of its previous root system. This may seem like too much pruning, but trees are much more resilient to damage than you might think. As I was about to start replanting the tree, my cat jumped onto the table wanting me to pet her. I was then forced to remove her from the room. Now with her out of the way and the root pruning finished, I now have to put the tree in its new pot. I am using a special pot that has grooves on the inside that will help the tree grow healthy roots. When putting your tree in its first training pot, I recommend using bonsai soil for the tree. It helps the roots grow more radially and it drains water much better than other soils. Once the tree was buried up to the correct depth, I then had to remove the air bubbles from the soil. When you pour soils that are made out of small pebbles, they often form air pockets in between the rocks. I am using a chopstick to go down into the soil and gently disturb it. This will destroy any air bubbles that might have formed and will help the tree's roots have better contact with their new soil. Air bubbles in the soil can potentially kill your tree if left unchecked, so this step is very important. With the tree now in its new pot, it is now time to work on its branches. But just the tree didn't have any branches to speak of, I'm going to do a trench up to the bald cypress to shorten its height and encourage ramification. This procedure is a drastic one, so only do it if you are certain of the health of vigor of your seedling. Now all I need to do is decide on where to perform the cut. I found an area near the base of a tree that has a few buds on it that looks like it would be a good location to cut. When doing a trench up, it is important to leave a few buds on a tree. You need those buds for the tree to regrow and make more branches in the spring. For example, if I were to do a trench chop and have this bud grow into a new branch, I would have to cut here to give it enough room to grow. Not every bud will end up growing, so make sure to keep a few on the tree just in case. When I cut the tree, I realized the pair of scissors I was using wasn't nearly sharp enough, so I had to draw leaves to get a sharper pair. When I came back, I cut one millimeter below the previous cut to get a much nicer and cleaner uh, wound on the tree. Having the wound be nice and flat like this will help the rainwater fall off of it and keep the tree from rotting, so we'll have a much better chance of surviving. Earlier in the spring, all three of the bald cypresses were starting to grow and heal from their trunk chops, but sadly, the local squirrels started attacking the trees by pulling out some of their bark. I eventually found a cinnamon-based liquid that repelled the squirrels, but it was sadly too late. One of the bald cypresses had died from having too much of its bark peeled off by the squirrels. The other two trees, however, recovered and are now thriving. 
They have all made a few new branches and are growing taller by the day. As you can see here, the new branches of the trees came out of the same place the buds were and started growing straight up. The branches are a little crowded because all three of them are trying to grow in the same direction. One of the branches actually won out and became the leader of the tree. This branch grew to be about twice as tall as the other two and is much thicker than the other branches as well. The bald cypress with the beautiful nabari was one of the two that survived the spring. Its trunk is now slightly thicker than a pencil and all of its exposed roots luckily survived the, tr the pruning process. A few months ago, I introduced a small colony of moss to the far left of a pot. Because I'm still relatively new to bonsai, I still needed to figure out how to grow moss. After a month of experimentation, trial and error, I finally got the knack of growing moss. The colony even got so happy that it started to spread to the other side of the pot as well. It's forming all these nice little clumps that make the pot look way nicer than it used to. The smallest of the three cypresses was the other one that survived. It has been growing slowly but steadily the past few weeks. Its branches are a lot more angled from the other cypresses, and one of, one of this tree's branches is growing almost completely sideways. I'm very curious inside to see how these trees develop in the next few months, and I hope you guys are too. Thank you for watching my video. Have a wonderful day, and stay safe out there.